Today on Pandavision, we're going to be talking about The Boys, Season 3, Episode 2 and 3, getting all caught up. Welcome to Pandavision, the Stranded Panda Podcast, where we cover all the geeky TV shows that don't fit so neatly into our other shows. My name is Matthew Carroll. I'm Matthew Fox, they have them pronouns. And I'm Ashley Coffin. Hey, 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 guys. Amen. What is happening? Uh, no, it's Lazy Monday. <laughs> two light episodes, not much to talk about. I'm sure mm-hmm. we'll be in and out. Yeah, yeah, in and out real quick, because, yeah, just just two episodes of The Boys packed with goodness. Uh, well, let's dive right in, then. Uh, what do you guys think of these? We, we watched episode one the other day. We had a good discussion about it. What do you guys think of these episodes two and three? Uh, I'm such an easy lay when it comes to this. I love it. I love every part of it. <laughs> I love what Butcher's doing. I just can't. I, I remember turning it on and I was like, what do you think his powers are going to be? And Ken, lo- he goes, look. And I looked over and I saw the like promo thing for it. And his eyes were yellow and what's his faces were red. And I was like, why they do that? But I can't right. wait to see it. Let's go. <laughs> I was happy. Yeah. This is everything I love about the boys. There was like, the character work is phenomenal. Homelander continue. You know, it's funny. I have always found Superman so boring because the fundamental conceit of Superman is yes, it would be terrifying if someone like this had so much power and you can't trust him, but we can trust Superman. And to me, that's a snooze mm-hmm. fest. But like that a speech Homelander gives where he says, Look, the love is the only thing that's stopping me from just going full on psycho murder person and killing mm-hmm. everyone and you can't stop me and just mm-hmm. the horror on starfire's face it was starlight oh, yeah. starlight starlight thank you thank you <laughs> i loved that scene specifically because i finally was like finally yeah tell everybody that you're gonna not take this shit anymore like it was it took a long time and many seasons to get here but for him to finally get there and be like no <laughs> yeah. you yeah. don't understand it's becoming more and more mask off and like it's just i love it because it's taken so long i love it because it's been this like realistic descent and not even a descent because he's been terrible all along but Mm -hmm. realistic just like slowly opening up about who he is and being willing to go further and further more and more people to hate him and he's just like willing to embrace his as he said this episode he's like i prefer to be loved i would but you know what? Fear is, <laughs> what do you say? Uh, a KO okie dokie with me or something like that. It was yeah. a really, really great line. <laughs> really great line. He's just so good. phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Th- there's one quick funny moment I have to point out, uh, or j- just a funny thing that happened to me, but I also like, I really appreciate this in the show. So I'm watching it with my partner, Abby. Uh, I'm, my, my father's family is Jewish. Abby is Jewish. And we were watching the second scene, the scene where in episode two, where he goes back to Stormfront's uh, bed and like, he's like, hey, aren't you going to wish me a happy birthday? Well, she's just lying there dying. And <laughs> God damn the show for making me sympathetic for her in that moment. Mm-hmm. Um, but a- Abby pointed out, you know, hey, it-, it is disappointing a little bit that in this show where we're dealing with Nazis, we haven't like, actually had any interesting Jewish characters so far. So the fact that literally the next scene is... A Jewish character who wants to commit suicide. Not a major character, but still this important character who says, I'm Jewish. Like, Abby and I just burst oh, out laughing. that is funny. <laughs> but, but also, I, did, I thought it was very well done because I mm-hmm. did think that, like, having her be Jewish in that moment and having Homelander be anti-Semitic the way he is for everyone in this thing that was about Stormfront was really nice. It was nice yeah. to sort of, like, bring that side in. In what, again, was just such a perfectly revealing scene about him. That for him, it's never about... It's just this, like, I want to help people, but once Stormfront kills herself, you know, he just, he just loses it entirely. Mm-hmm. It's, it's one of the last people he has on the earth that, like, seems to want to be affectionate for, like, for, to, who kind of loves him for him. And mm-hmm. then she sort of abandoned him. And now he's, like, I don't know, it's this weird place because he thinks, he's both thinking the more authentic he is, people, the public is liking him. And I'm really worried, man. I'm really worried how far he's going to go and the public's going to support him. And I mean, I think that's clearly an analog for what's what's happening in our world today. Yeah. Uh, and like how far can politicians go? How crazy can they get? How, you know, supremacist can they get? And you mm-hmm. just, you know, the their people will just continue to follow. 
And then they're like, distract with a reality show and here's a new celebrity couple. Oh, you idiots, look this way, look this way. Yep. You know yeah. what I mean? Yep. I hate to call myself because I'm like, oh, with everybody else. And that's how they, it, it's a, yeah, they do a really good job with this show with, there's no underlying. They're just throwing it in our faces. Oh, yeah. yeah. The social commentary is just right there. I mean, to the point that these like openings and stuff, like the, the again, we started this episode with, uh, the second episode with the deep, uh, the, on uh, VTV, which was Vought, uh, Vought's <laughs> Woman TV, which VTV, come on. So good. <laughs> there was and a that, lot of that. Yeah. The- they also mentioned uh, Vought's Soul and Vautamundo. Yeah, Vautamundo. Just- <laughs> the thing that, re- and that's the- what I love about it is that they are, they're doing what I most love in social commentary, where they're saying, let's take the stuff that already exists and is already a problem ask how would this look different with superheroes and use that to not just be a comment about superheroes, but also comment on our own stuff, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, my email is full of lots of discussions about rainbow capitalism and like, it's great on one hand that all these companies are like doing everything rainbow instead of just rejecting it all, but also like, it's kind of terrible. And so when I watch, you know, the woke walk and BLM BLTs at Vought where everything's a rainbow, oh, I was like, the commentary here is brilliant. Or like, you know, the eight-year-olds in beauty pageants being sexy as they can because that's what their mothers mm-hmm. tell them to do. So, of course, in the superhero world, you'd have a superhero beauty pageant with the <laughs> exact same dynamic. There's just so much thought that goes into every moment of this, and I love it. Ken mm-hmm. kept going like, ugh, ugh, during the Britney, like, just yeah. poor girls out there. So he was like, ugh. And I was like, look away. <laughs> yeah. it's, so it's pretty pretty uncomfortable because yeah, it is mm. very like a, a very sexual dance for that little girl um but i mean i was in pageants i remember were you wow mm. i was miss eastern hemisphere that explains even more of your darkness you were miss what eastern hemisphere whichever one i have a watch that has it inscribed in the back little diamonds and stuff one day i'll get it cleaned and i'm also like i should probably sell that <laughs> I was also like six, so gross. Don't you live in the Western Hemisphere? That was it then. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. I yeah. haven't read it in a long time. It's been a long time. Uh-huh. Sorry. That's fair. But no, it yeah. just fair. sounds better. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, I dig that's, it. That's hilarious, though. And that, yeah, because that's the thing is like everything they have done is stuff where I look at our world and say, if we had superpowers, yeah, I believe that would happen. Yep. Yeah. You know? And I think Absolutely. that's just. To me, it's the best part of all this. Like all the stuff about a train trying to embrace Africa. Like mm-hmm. I, I, on the one hand, like, and I love that they, on the one hand, like they, 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 they kind of make fun of that and how celebrities do that. But at the end, there's this clear implication of a superhero who basically like killed an armed black man the way cops do. And it was just like, oh, okay, now, now you made the joke about it. Now you're going to get now you're being very, it. Yeah. And how mm-hmm. all of the black community didn't take him seriously. And I love that they did that. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. the scene was with his brother was great. Yeah, it really. You know, was. he's gonna die if he keeps. He can't run again, right? Yeah. He doesn't technically have powers, as I would see it. Yeah. Well, I mean, he does, but he does. He could die. But it's like he might die or he might not. They said. Yeah. So I definitely think we're gonna come to a point where he's gonna run. What do you think he'll run over? Will he run because of fame, or will he run over some sort of something principled? Is this a, is this an arc for him where he's gonna like try to? Try to actually be real and be principled, or is he going to try to run for fame at some point? And in do the race. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I, you know, it's interesting because before this episode, if you'd told me about it, I would say that the whole like black person killed by a superhero was going to kind of radicalize him. I mean, in a good way. I mean mm-hmm. that word. Sure. And like yeah. get him to be an actual activist in a good way. But the thing is, like one of the most heartbreaking parts of this episode, and also the most upsetting in how they showed it, and Paul, I'm speaking on your behalf, like, I hate that they did this, but I, it was great for Deep's character, even though I wish they'd done it in a different way. You're going to talk about it, aren't you? Yeah. Watching the Deep eat Terrible. that octopus was... Gary! Timothy, yeah. I didn't watch it. I hated that they did it. I, I, I looked away. They could have done the whole thing off screen to, to get the same point. I, I, I'm not happy with how they did that and from animal rights, all that kind of stuff. But I think they'd given us with Deep so much of, an, of a redemption arc and made us care about him again. And so to have him both, like, do that thing, and then the line he says to Starlight of, you know, I just realized that the first person you have to forgive is yourself. Mm -hmm. (laughs) He has no understanding of what she's going through. He has no genuine... And it was just like, okay, yeah. You're you're reminding us that in this story, 
a redemption arc is not really a redemption arc, probably. And so no. that that makes me think A Train is it's going to be some version of that. Like he's going to be, he's going to want to. He's going to want to be Kaepernick, but want to do it for the publicity, not for the reasons that Ka- like someone like Kaepernick does. Yeah. It. Right, yeah. right. Mm. And he's, just, yeah, he's, he's just so influenceable. Is that a word? But he's, if there's, if that's a word, he's that. Because he just did like the cult and now he's right back with Homelander and now his fiance, I know she was a little justified in being angry about the octopus because then I'd be like, well, how many times did you get jerked off by that octopus when I wasn't here? Mm-mm. <laughs> Because that was what was insinuated, and then she was like, "You're going to eat Gary." And now, did she go tell Homelander about that? Does he yeah get involved, like spy on him for me? No, I didn't. I didn't take it as that. But like, I don't know. I think there's this weird thing they do where with the sexuality of the sea life, where every basically every sea creature he's talked to so far has spoken to him sexually is the implication, <laughs> uh, which is just weird. <laughs> and, and that was a very funny and weird scene when it, it, the scene before timothy gets eaten um but yeah it's terrible oh, timothy is my friend timothy mm-hmm. has a family mm-hmm. uh timothy you know uh timothy's timothy's praying like it was just so so terrible i i did not take that i mean yes absolutely um the deep did it i did feel really bad for the deep in that moment too though um, because I don't know that he had much of a choice. I mean, I guess he did. Mm-hmm. I just don't know that, uh, I don't know what homely, how Homelander would have responded. And again, like, is it for fame or is it because he feels legitimately scared of Homelander? Um, oh, both. Yeah. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. so too. Um, mm, yeah. why I would mean, you want to be back in that environment? Except, yeah, I guess the only fame. reason he wants back in that environment is for fame. So he's put himself in that situation for the wrong <laughs> reasons. He's not there for, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. whatever. I just, I keep root. I like as much as. Uh, you know, I, and deep has the deepest and horrible things. I do feel terrible for him. He's, he's been through a lot too. And I keep <laughs> rooting for him to like, finally, like actually make a change in his life and like try to, you know, be better for the right reasons. And I just don't know if it, I, I'm ever going to get that. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I was on that train. I'm very much off it now. Both, <laughs> both cause, cause I'm like, yeah, you're scared of Homelander. You know what? Make a stand. Mm-hmm. Like yep. you've got all the other people around. Don't eat, do not eat your friends is I think a fairly like basic level of uh, um, requirement, but also it, it, yeah. it, it's what he did with Starlight. That was just so outrageous. Yeah, I still haven't forgiven him. for. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. And, and just show that he has no, he has no understanding. No remorse. So much of my feelings about him last season were maybe he truly understands why what he did with Starlight was so wrong. Mm. You know, it, it, it's funny. Um, uh, Matt, you and I were talking about this on the Orville podcast, like the difference between, you know, rec- uh, rec- reconcili- justice of reconciliation, ver- a restorative justice versus retri- retri- ret- retribution justice. I don't say the words properly. Right. Retributive, and then yeah. part of it's like, yeah, you can like try and help people like change their lives and be better, but that doesn't mean re-traumatizing their victims by making them be around them. And, and to me, yeah. that's exactly right. what this is about. Like, for let sure. the deep heal, let the deep find a new life, but don't don't make him don't make Starlight have to be a part of that. Oh yeah. Right. I mean it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible that he's there. Um now as far as the deep is concerned, I think there's a um I don't know. There's this there's yeah. It's it's such a it's such a weird thing. Uh I, I just I, I I I'm sorry. I I I want I think a lot of what he's doing in the scene, a lot of his like actions of morality, they're like things that he's learned like the idea that 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 line he tells starlight i don't think he's saying that intentionally to insult her or like to invalidate her experience i think he's saying that because he's trying to show her he's a better man and he's learned from his mistakes but like he's doing just kind of what he's been taught uh, what he's been taught he only feels bad for himself he doesn't he has not yet had an experience that makes him empathetic toward her and her experience and so like when he comes into that room and says that i don't think he's trying to like needle her at all i think he's i didn't i don't think he's being malicious i think he's just an idiot yeah he's just an idiot yeah and i just i I keep waiting for him to actually learn that lesson of empathy because i think that happened with mave (laughs) and i think mave has always been empathetic to some degree um but mave finally took that flip you know when she realized what was going on and realized she had to fight against things and Mm -hmm. now she's working to subvert homelander and I just, I, I don't know. 
I, I want that for basically every character. <laughs> I'm, I'm basically rooting for every character in the I show know. to finally like come to terms with what's really going on, you know? Yeah. But all of them seem like they could just be another Homelander if they're put in the wrong position, you know? Yeah. How yeah. about poor Black Noir? He oh, took his terrible. mask. He's like, I'm all, I'm not going to wear this mask anymore. And if he don't wear no guy, woo. Terrible. So messed up. Oh, it's up. so terrible. So I like part of me for a second was like, I think Matt might be right. And they're only going to show Soldier Boy in flashbacks until they said they took his body away in a helicopter yep. at the end. Because then I was like, that's fine. I'm cool with it. He's doing a fun job. I want a little bit more. But uh, I was like, oh, no. But then I was like, ah, no. there you go. There you go. The helicopter, you're alive. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I think they are 100%. I, I think they're quite literally winter soldiering. Him, yeah. You know, that he's, <laughs> he's going to be frozen somewhere. Like Bucky Barnes is, you know, waiting for the Russians to reactivate. Yeah, mm-hmm. possibly literally like uh, in control of the Russians. But I don't think I doubt it's like actual mind control. And it's probably just he was like on that battlefield and he was like, listen, I'll just go with you guys. Like, I don't <laughs> yeah. this is this is a shit show over here. I'm with you. Yeah. But yeah. his partner, uh, I you forget can take her my name, <laughs> Crimson something. Crimson, uh, Crimson Crusader. Crusader. I just wanted to say Tide and that was not right. <laughs> You're Alabama. not even the Alabama girl. <laughs> That's exactly what I meant. <laughs> Crimson Crusader uh comes in and she's like, um, yeah, uh he, he left. They killed him. Like, so the only information they have is from her, which means she's covering for him, or she helped, I don't know, the Russians capture him or something like that. Like, um, I have a feeling he just did like flipped sides in that moment mm-hmm. or something. I don't think she knows. Mm. I think that's possible. I, I think it's also very possible he got badly wounded and she saw his body and was like, oh, he's dead. Mm-hmm. Possible. I just got the vibe that she was lying. I yeah. don't know why. Because she's like, we yeah. saw it. We all saw it. And I'm like, uh, saw what? Them take him. That's not him dying. Yeah. But then they, they she m- did seem very, she was like, I don't know. I don't know. I think he's dead. They talk about like this <laughs> weapon, but like, it's very like. There was a weapon, you know, it just feels like it just feels like they just made something up to mm-hmm. they had yeah. some other plan to get Soldier Boy out of the way or something like that. Maybe that was it. Maybe they were tired of him having all the spotlight. He's the leader of the team. Maybe some team, some of the teammates conspired to, like, yeah. send him off, you know, <laughs> they were terrible. They couldn't do anything. They were so terrible. <laughs> I, Edgar was so wrong that they were ready for military service, you know, Smoking cigarettes <laughs> and stuff. The twins. And, and I love it that it gives so much more history to why, like, wh- first of all, why did they wait this long to put so- soups into the military? But also, like, why are people so hesitant about it? So, you yeah, gotta it, train like, them. <laughs> like, yeah, you gotta train them. But also, people are hesitant about it for that reason, but also Edgar's hesitant about it. I even think it might tie into why Homelander exists. Because mm-hmm. he saw that go so wrong, and he was like... Okay, I need a superhero that I design and control and raise from an early age and like is is mine. Mm-hmm. And then they they create Homelander in a lab, but now he's just a, a huge disappointment. And now what is Ed, now Edgar's just going with this like, you know, vials of V or whatever. Yeah. That's his new. He's just going to be selling that to the military. Hours. Yeah. Well, he has been adopting. He adopted uh Nadia. Nadia, so I wonder, Victoria. called very happy, like yeah, seeing like did. how close they mm-hmm. are. That was so great, so good, so good. Yeah, I really thought she was going to have more of a, uh, you know, a, a history with, uh, uh, you know, I said it last episode. My theory was that she was going to be like a crusader who got turned to the dark side by Vod. But no, she's <laughs> like pretty they early said on. Something about it in the last episode. She said like we have to tell people the truth about Red River. Which mm-hmm. was the place, this the adoption agency type thing mm-hmm. or the group home mm-hmm. for children with superpowers? Yep. I don't know why I thought I knew. I thought we talked about that in the last episode. Huh. We did. We did. But yeah. that's, that's all they said was like, we got to tell people about Red River. Huh. And what Red River was, it was just an adopt, like this uh, group home for children Which with superpowers. Was, that was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that scene was great. <laughs> I, I love when he talks to Starlight in a little bit and says, Also, I think I signed us up to adopt a child. (laughs) (laughs) Just the look on her face is priceless. No. But speaking of the look on her face, I got to say the little girl who played young Britney version of her Mm -hmm. was such a good dead ringer for her. So is the young Stan. They even put his little mole with the, I thought he looked Mm. just like him. Yeah. Yeah, And and Mallory too. Yeah. They looked really, really good. Yeah. Yeah. I even wondered at some points if there was some uh, CGI going on because they looked so good mm-hmm. at some yeah. moments. 
uh, particularly Mallory and um, Starlight to me looked just like yeah, so but, so spot on. And I loved everything about that Mallory scene, you know, because it was such the idea of you know learning so much more about her bitterness towards soups, but also just like what a total fuck up this was. And it, mm-hmm. it it's funny because um in some of the superhero ethics podcasts, Paul and I have been talking a lot about um uh particularly in the movie Ipmon, but this idea of like. You one person can be a very good individual fighter, but against ten thousand people, like rarely is that going to matter. And like in Homelander's case, maybe it does, but even with most soups, it wouldn't. You know, mm-hmm. just sheer numbers are going to overwhelm you. And so, yeah, kind of watching that happen um, was really interesting. I, I yeah. just thought it was so well done. Yeah, but also it was just they were killing their own men and stuff. They were just oh, terrible. They killed all the Americans. Yeah, it was really bad. Yeah, they panicked. They screwed up. Mm-hmm. I did like watching the the buzzy guy get get hit by a rocket. It was, was great. <laughs> they do explosions of bodies and heads really well. Like the the jaws. I'm like, yeah. wow, how much of that is CGI and how much is that is just like Jerry like jelly jam with red dye because it just mm-hmm. It looks it's a little so CGI though, but I would like to look into more how they do their effects. I'm sure it's a mix. I'm sure it's a mix. Mm-hmm. It's, it's what it's always done at its best, you know. You get the little extra detail of the CGI, but you get the <laughs> real visceral nature of the uh, effect. Uh, speaking of that same effect, we also had the uh, uh, Frenchie and Kiko. Is that her name? Keiko. 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 Is it Keiko? It okay. Keiko? Was Keiko, yeah. I, they haven't said it in so long. Yeah, they, they haven't said it in either of these episodes. And I was like, she's just mon cher. <laughs> <laughs> mon cher. Mon cher. Mon cher. Sherry was his other girlfriend. Oh, that's right. How they Are they actually romantically together? I don't know. Their relationship's th- very interesting. Yeah. I mm. think I think he sort of has more of a, like, care- he's kind of fallen more into a, like, he wanted that at first, but now he's kind of fallen into a caretaker role. But I wasn't sure. I was going to see if, like, did I not remember something? Mm. No, but, I don't, I don't know if they ever really got together. They yeah, just I don't, comfort each other. They definitely <laughs> seem like they are life partners in some sense but i don't really understand exactly their relationship i don't know if it's actually gotten romantic and she seems to have a lot of uh, trauma and issues mm-hmm. that seem to be like uh making her a little childlike at times and it's it's just kind of yeah it's it's an interesting dynamic between them um and i and i, and I love how much he seems to really care for her mm-hmm. so here here's something that i thought about this episode while watching it and also while editing our podcast from last week but so she is he gets offered to leave twice this episode and i think they're really driving something home there frenchie gets offered by sherry or Cher, or whatever her name is mm-hmm. uh to leave leave with her and he decides to stay and i was and when i saw that scene i was like oh he's like he's kind of choosing moncour whatever he calls i've her tried moncour. to look it up twice and it's just like the boys has so many websites you can't find anything simple so kamiko is her name got it uh so kamiko then kamiko i I was thinking like maybe that's because he's turning down share because he's really ready to like stay with kamiko like he's choosing a life with kamiko but then kamiko asks him to leave and he decides to stay which like i then i was like he's staying for the boys you know like that's like uh, but is that it Mm-hmm. And then I combined that with a with a thought we had in our last episode where we were like we were talking about uh the fact that Mr. Edgar has his hands in every side of this except the boys. And I was like, so Mr. Edgar's really controlling all the pieces on the board. And I was like, what if he does have his hands in the boys? Mm. And then I was thinking about it and the fact that he's so resistant to leave for these two people that he cares about a lot. And then I'm thinking about it like, yes, he, why is, what is his trauma? Everyone else there is there for a very personal reason. And I don't really remember Frenchie's reason for being, being in the boys, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and it makes me wonder about, Fr- like, j- those are two very different thoughts from different parts of the storylines. But I started thinking about it and I was like, I wonder if, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to worry about Frenchie. Yeah. I thought he had a family or at least a wife who the soups killed. Like he certainly, they've implied that he has a major tragedy there, and I yeah, they imply. I'd be they really all disappointed do. if they mm-hmm. did that. Like I, 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 like I get that you know it when when you go down that road of everything is is betrayal somewhere. Maybe that's where you're going to go. But I, 
I think I'd be disappointed if they have that. I oh, I'd be really I, disappointed if they did it. I just I also think it could be possible. If in, if yeah. not him, someone. And mm-hmm. then I was looking going down the list, and I'm like, we've seen too much of the internal struggle of MM to like stay away from it. Like, yeah. I think he's clearly there for the reasons he's there for. We know Huey's there for the reasons he's there for. We know why Butcher's there, and like we know my Kamiko's there. Um, and it just seems Frenchy. Like I, I just I don't know as much about his past, and maybe there's something in the yeah. previous seasons I'm forgetting. But I was like, if there's if there was a betrayer, it might be Frenchy, especially with all his like past with all these other people who've held things over him. And right. she even had that conversation about someone always has your leash. Someone's yeah. always got you got you on a leash. And when they pull, you go. And I'm wondering, like, is it Butcher or is it Edgar? Hmm. That's that's yeah. just a random stray thought. Oh, no. Sorry. Yeah, I, I will say I found all the stuff about the boys getting back together with you know, first MM, like, feeling like he has to do it, and that just very beautiful, but very heartbreaking conversation he has with, with Monique, his ex. Yeah. Um, which, which it just again reminded me of how much I appreciate when shows, like, don't make the ex-wife, like, they don't make the stepfather the evil buffoon, they don't make the ex-wife the mm-hmm. person to win back, and, and she supports him, and she loves him. But then also, like, Butcher finally realizing he should get out, he should stop this, maybe things are okay, and Huey being the one to pull him back in. It was just like, oh, this show was so good at emotional masochism. <laughs> it's like, yep. It was so hard to watch and so good. Yep, absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I got really worried for MM this episode because of his like needing to be out, knowing it's a bad decision. Like when someone walks into something like that and they just like feel compelled, even though they know it's a terrible decision. I just I worry about their life uh, on the yeah. show. Like I'm really worried that he knows he's making a bad decision. He knows he's putting himself in danger. And the thing that really worries me is there's this idea he talks to Monique about. He says, like, just please keep her out of this. Never tell her about what I'm doing because (laughs) I don't want her to know. And, like, I don't want her to experience what I've experienced because my dad was killed by a soup. And now, like, I have been by Soldier Boy. And now I have been, like, my whole life has been dedicated to this. And I don't want her to, I don't want this generational thing to continue. Mm -hmm. And it just makes me think, like, this season's going to end with her seeing him die to a soup. Like, I just feel like that's, like, where the story is going um, because the show is so masochistic. Sorry, I'm just making predictions everywhere. Uh, sorry about no, that. No, it's fine. No, I, my predictions uh, came true, so I'm happy. I'm I'm done with the season. <laughs> I just can't wait. I can't wait to see what Starlight is going to do because having to pretend to be his boy or girlfriend is not Mm-mm. easy. I mean, Mm-mm. she can oh. keep doing her little fist thing all she wants, but uh, that's not going to last very long. Oh, he did it so well too. You mm-hmm. want to do it again? Let's do it again. She's like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> One thing I noticed is that he, the actor, is so good at smiling but not with his eyes you know mm-hmm. he will have this like what's wrong what mm-hmm. why do we have to go over and he has this smile on his face but his eyes are so menacing and it's just you know i think facial acting gets talked about a lot but it's hard sometimes to quantify and in his case it's just so good mm-hmm. do Absolutely. we trust that her ex-boyfriend is really on her side or already was talked to by mr edgar and is going to be like a spy since she went and told on him do we like him or do we hate him <laughs> wait which guy uh, her ex-boyfriend i think at this point we like with him. the 16 year old song <laughs> excuse me which i think the point was he sang when he was 16 but it's still kind of horrible that they have that lyric in yeah. it they made him he was like i don't want to sing this song but you still did <laughs> he said it was gross when i was 16 and now it's mm-hmm. way worse Way worse. The mm. Dancing Queen says she's only 17, so it's not like the first time they've done that. It's true. Music. It's no, true. It, it's I, definitely not. There's a lo- There's a guy on a TikTok who just does like sussy songs, and it's all just like songs about singing about young girls, and he's just going like, like looking into the camera like, really? <laughs> I, I, here would be my prediction, which I just broke my, I'm not going to make predictions rule. I think he's going to be a genuinely good guy, but that with Huey kind of off in Russia doing the boys things, <sighs> she's going to turn to singer guy more and more for mm-hmm. comfort. It's going to reek. And also like the fact that they're in a fake love triangle for media stuff, like they're going to kiss on camera. And mm-hmm. like, I think she's going to be somewhat romantically tempted by him. Mm-hmm. And he's going to maybe be a little pushy about that or a little more like, yeah, why don't you leave Huey? Like be with me or something. Mm-hmm. I think though, in the end, he's going to make some, 
brave, stupid attempt to stand up to Homelander and get fried. That's what I was going to think too. I, I, I think I think you're close, but I'm I'm seeing a little different. Like, so you got this this through line. I I actually think that Starlight might kiss him for real because Huey just put her in a terrible situation. She was like, "I'm ready to leave Vought. I'm done." And Huey's like. That line it was was so harsh when he's just like, if that's what it takes, like because he he's ready to do whatever it takes to bring all this stuff down, yeah. And she's ready to save her life, and he and instead of caring for her, he says whatever if that's what it takes. He's choosing to put her at risk, and then um, Supersonic decides to stay and risk his life so he can protect her. And I think if that if that trend continues, there's absolutely a possibility that she will fall a little bit for supersonic oh, yeah. or at least they'll oh, yeah, have like a they might have a touching yeah. moment and then they kiss and then the some sort of like paparazzi or whatever catch it and then you have to deal with like homelander's been betrayed by another woman yeah. and then like all those all those incel right wingers oh, from the uh from the mobs like are like oh like the woman hate begins and then they they just rally yeah, to his I side even more pop- like, i think that's well within what i was predicting i said i think she's definitely gonna be tempted by him so yeah it's- yeah and then homelander's he's gonna try to stand up for her to homelander and he's gonna kill him <laughs> yeah yeah oh yeah that's pretty likely <laughs> one small thing that made me uncomfortable and mostly because it just now feels like they've gone to this well a bunch of times is I think the thing about gunpowder being kind of like treated badly by um, Soldier Boy is an interesting hook. Making it about sexual, you know, sexual things that Soldier Boy did to another guy, you know, a kid. Like, if you actually understand the issue, you know that often, like, because we don't know exactly what happened, but often, like, when adults abuse teens sexually, it often has nothing to do with gender. It's much more about opportunity and things like that. But, like... This is a number, there's a number of times now where they've showed us how debauched and terrible a soup is by having them do things with other people of the same gender. And I'm, I'm just a little done with it. Like it's, it's not a huge deal. I'm not going to be mad if it continues. Well, I think he didn't, I, I just, he didn't I just, do I, it though. He didn't, yeah, do, he it. didn't do it. Sean Patrick Flannery would have said so. Yeah. He said sh- that. No, he just used to, you know, cause he was yeah. like a life or death there. He says but he. Still, he thinks he has the smoking gun. I, it's it's a uh, it's just uh, it's Butcher teasing him about it, and then yeah, he thinks he just, has a smoking gun that says abuse, and he's like, no, it's just that he would you know he would beat me up and stuff because of right. whatever. I mean, I think it's possible he's still in denial about it, but like either way, even if it's not true, it just was like did, there were so many other ways Butcher could have gotten leverage over him that that making it sexual, making Butcher be you know be so graphic in how he described it, it just felt. It it was just an uncomfortable moment for me. Sure, mm. I hear that. I really love that we kind of made the call that like this might be a flashback episode and that we might get this whole thing. And I, I just hey, we did, we did. It was it was a I, ju- I just listened to the episode. It was a stack okay. thing. We came up, we yeah. came to it. Um, but yeah, I think it was you that told throughout that like we might get the Edgar backstory, and I, we absolutely did. And I love that we got the Mallory and the Edgar and their connections, and then the like. Yeah, it all it all it all tied together so well and I love that we're getting that like uh sort of deep continuity of what happened in the past. I really love that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I liked um we finally got Butcher with the powers. We didn't really yes. yeah. talk about so he's invincible oh. and has super sparkle eyes or <laughs> Yeah, my question is do they have the same powers every time? Is mm-hmm. are there different compound V's that operate differently? Mm-hmm. Is it the compound V that gives the power? Is it the person that gives the power? Do different people have different reactions? Like we don't really know how it works yeah. yet. I'm really Mm-mm. curious. But the biggest thing, I, I think, one of the biggest moments in this episode that I can't believe we haven't touched on yet, is, or these two episodes, is when he kills uh, Gunpowder um, yep. because oh, yeah. yeah, he stands over Gunpowder and Gunpowder has submitted. Gunpowder mm-hmm. is just basically a political showman at this point. He's not even really mm-hmm. a soup anymore. Uh-uh. He's and he's just like a, a you know gun wielding maniac. He's not really like a what you know whatever. He was like a bullseye. I don't think he's nearly the risk. And then right after he's been dealing with his you know his um I guess sort of stepson in a way. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's been dealing with I forget I'm forgetting Homelander's son. I forget yeah. his name. Um, but right after he's been dealing with him and and, and caring for him. He stands over that guy and says, it doesn't change what you are. And then kills the guy just because he's a soup. Absolutely. Just like, 
racist against soups. Like there's no, <laughs> uh, you know, there's no, the guy's not doing anything. The guy has no plans. The guy is not like, you know, hasn't done anything to be killed for. All we know is that he's like a survivor of this abuse of soldier boy. And like, you know, and now he's a bit of a political guy for this NRA version Vought in RA. Right. Butcher has always been very upfront with who he is. <laughs> oh, for sure. For sure. But that's the thing is like he's been making his connection with a young soup. And you think like maybe he's maybe he's changing. And then it's after that that he walks away from the boy and says, like, no, I'm you know, he 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 sends the boy away, basically. And mm-hmm. I think that is him going, like, I really he's choosing to be the the man who doesn't uh, isn't going to care for soups in any way. Well, I also think he doesn't think he's coming back from this mission to kill Homelander. And mm. it's easier to just kind of cut ties. Yeah. Mm. Like it, it, it felt very cruel to the kid to do it mm-hmm. that way. It also felt exactly like what butcher would, t- what butcher would tell himself is the right thing to do. Yep. But I do think part of it is that he does have some anger against the kid for killing Becca. And yeah. he does have some anger and fear of the kid. Cause he's a soup. Mm-hmm. Yeah. D- to me, the other thing that was really interesting about that, and it makes me wonder if maybe like we're hunting in the wrong direction for the weapon, his powers weren't just the powers of a soup. His powers were pretty explicitly those as Homelander. That's what like, it seemed like. I don't think yeah. we've seen anyone else have like the laser eyes like that. And the laser eyes is a big part of how he can the do baby. Like, mass kill it. Yes, yeah, the, the baby. <laughs> and also being 100% bulletproof. Like, mm-hmm. it makes me wonder, like, you know, I imagine there. I mean, maybe that is what um, the pills do. Uh, yeah, maybe what they if make Edgar, new homelanders every time. What if Edgar doesn't have like he doesn't actually work with um, the boys at all? He doesn't have a spy, but he is a little bit hoping that the right person will get a hold of this and take care of Homelander for him. Oh, a hundred percent. Who gave the yeah. vials? Was it Mallory who got the vials for them? It was Maeve, I thought. Right? Yeah, it's it probably it. Yeah. Okay. Mallory is Grace, right? Is that her last name? Yeah, yeah. Mallory, her Mallory. Mallory is the last name. Very yeah. confusing. Or Grace Mallory. Yeah, I was like, I was just calling her Grace. Who the hell is Sorry, Grace? They, okay. they called her Mallory for the first like two seasons, or the first season before we met her. They kept calling her Mallory, mm-hmm. but we didn't know if it was a male or a female until uh, they until they met her. Okay. Being their old CIA contact, and they just called Mallory used to treat us all rough, and then when it turned out to be this sort of like uh understated english woman like it was like yeah. it was kind of uh, against mm-hmm. type i liked it yeah mm-hmm. she was great i liked the flashback oh, with her. so good so good you know i i lied but she she was yet she was for the yankees instead of the mets and <laughs> I, can't, I can't i can't abide with that can't abide with that. not everybody's perfect she worked for reagan i can forgive that but a yankees fan <laughs> <laughs> so terrible when her friend who she was talking to about baseball just blew up in front of her it was just oh, terrible. i know oh. mm-hmm. all right well uh guys that is our thoughts on uh the boys uh episodes one through three uh we're gonna be back in a few uh in a few days actually it's really soon uh friday uh actually you guys might not be on it this friday but we're gonna have an episode on friday uh of the boys uh, to talk about this episode four. I hope they only drop one episode. I don't know what we're going to do if they keep dropping multiples. I think that'll just be one. I think they did so this too. last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, it's, a, it's a smart thing to do to front load the season. So you're like, you know, you're excited because you're really living in the world all of a sudden, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but you still get the week to week excitement building and everything. Uh, so, yeah. All right. Well, uh, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we'll be back soon. Uh, anybody got anything they want to plug? TheEthicalPanda.com, but most importantly, Zen Madman channel on YouTube. Please go there, like, subscribe. There's a lot of great content. We're doing the videos of the Ethical Panda podcast, especially all the stuff about Kenobi. But also, we're just trying to grow it as a way to really try to grow the Ethical Panda brand, uh, allow for me and Paul to spend a lot more time uh, podcasting and creating great content. So please just go to uh, YouTube, Zen Madman, and hit like and subscribe. Sweet. You guys have your videos. It's like your name and then your superhero name. His name and his superhero name, and then it's just my name. I'm yeah. like, God damn it! I need a I need a superhero name. Well, no, the, the thing. Well, I mean, a you are, you know, uh, what was it? Grand High C- Supreme Commander, Supreme Leader. Yeah, Supreme How could Leader. You forget that Star Wars fan. <laughs> <laughs> but, but also, just like you're actually called it. You know, it's it's like the, Cher. There's that great scene at the end of season one of Gossip Girl where they're all saying the terrible things they did, and Chuck Bass just says. I'm Chuck Bass. You don't need yeah. a name. <laughs> Ashley Coffin <laughs> is a superhero name. It's funny. Okay. Love I like it. it. All right. Well, guys, we'll be back. Peace.
War. Bye. Thank you for listening to PandaVision. We are a member of the Stranded Panda Network. For all of our podcasts and other creative geeky projects, check out strandedpanda.com.